So now it's getting interesting with our Discord bot. And in this lesson, we're going to deal with work to earn money, which will use an API that we can fetch general knowledge questions from. We're going to add buttons and have interactivity with it. And we're also going to add a rob command so that we can add some peril to the game by being able to steal from people's purses. Let's start by working on the work command. Now, the idea behind this is really, really simple. We don't want people to just type slash work and get some money. We want them to actually work for it. So what I'm going to do is start by defining the work command. And the first thing I'm going to do is pop out to a free API and get some trivia questions. Now, I need to import two libraries for this. I need to import requests and JSON. This will allow me to get the data from the internet and pass it as if it was a dictionary. We're going to use result equals requests dot get, and that will send a message out onto the internet and return what we get into results. And I'm going to put in the URL of the questions API there. You can go and copy that from the tutorial pane if you want. I'm then going to turn it into a workable dictionary by passing it by creating the questions dictionary, which is the results just passed as a JSON file. I'll just print that out to start with so we can see what's happening. And you can see here, every time we run work, we get a bunch of questions as well as the correct and a list of incorrect answers. Now, what we're going to do is extract some of that information. I'm going to create a variable question, which is just the question. And the way I access that is I'm going to access the first element in the dictionary and pull out the question part of it. I'm going to do the same with the correct answer and the incorrect answers. Let's print those out to see what we've got. So there we are, that seems a bit better. We get the first question, the correct answer, and a list of incorrect answers. So let's make a complete list of those answers. And that's going to be quite easy for us. What we're going to do is make a new variable called answers, which is going to start with the incorrect answers, which is a list anyway. I'm going to append the correct answer on, but we don't want people realizing the correct answer is always the last one on the list. I'm going to shuffle that answers array by using the random library. Random.shuffle will take a list and just change the order randomly. And that's what we want in this case. OK, so now we want to set this up because you've seen Discord bots that give you questions in just text form. And there are a million tutorials that do that. Let's not be boring. Let's give the user some buttons and let them click the correct answer. So this is done by creating a view. Now, a view is a way of creating a little bit of UI that we can push to the user. And we can push it in a normal way that we do a message. Let's start off by just bringing a button in to test that out. I'm going to create a view. And to do that, I need to do discord.ui.view, which creates the view that I'm going to use. I'm then going to create just a generic button for now with the first answer on it. So we do button equals discord.ui button. And in the brackets, we're going to get all the arguments. The label is what's going to appear on the button. So I'm going to take in answer zero. That's the first answer from my list. I'm then going to pick the style, and I'm just going to make these buttons green. There's a massive list of these styles if you want to have a mess around with it. Blurple is a good one. We then need to add that to the view with view.addItemButton, and then send that view to the user. And at a very simple level, we can use ctx.send view equals view and send that through. Let's see what that looks like. Now you can see whenever I do slash work, a new question is generated, and the button is giving me just the first answer. If I click that button, I'm going to have a bad time, because I haven't actually built any interaction for it yet. So let's see how we can do that in a nice, easy way. Now before we do that, I'm going to add one more thing to my button, and that's a custom ID. And to start with, I'm just going to set that up as button1. But custom ID is basically what's going to be sent back to us. So that eventually is going to be the answer of the button. But this is just to show you what's happening. I'm then going to create a callback. Now, this is an async definition within an async definition, which feels a bit sick of all, but there we go. And I'm going to call it button underscore callback, which is a known name. That means it'll understand what it is. In the brackets, I'm going to say interaction, because it's the interaction I'm dealing with. In other words, which thing has been clicked. And just to start with, I'm going to print interaction.data, which should tell us everything that's coming back about the button. And I'm going to send to the user as a response, just the message clicked. Now, I then need to attach that to the button before we get it added to the view. And the way we do that is button.callback equals button underscore callback, which is straightforward. So running this means that when I run work, I get my button. And if I click it, I get the message clicked. If we go into our console then and see what we got, we got all that data. So how do we get just the custom ID? Well, 
it looks like a dictionary to me. So let's stick a square bracket on the end and put custom ID. And yep, we're getting the message button one. If the answer we get back is the actual answer, let's tell them they've earned $100. Great. Let's change that custom message to the answer. So this is great. When the user clicks it now, we're getting the answer back. Uh, otherwise, we'll tell them they get a dollar for trying. Let's try that. So now I've only got one button now, so I haven't got all the options. So <laughs> I'll click this a few times to see what happens. Now, of course, there's also an issue here, the button being left there. I can click that button as many times as I want and earn as much money as I can. So let's delete the original message. And that's reasonably straightforward. What we're going to do is we're going to add to this async def the ability to take the message and delete it. And that's the original message. That means once they've clicked the button, it'll disappear and they won't be able to click it again. So that works nicely. We've got the message now saying we've earned 100 and that interaction has gone now. Okay, but how do we add those multiple buttons? Well, we could copy and paste the code, but uh, nobody wants to be doing that. Let's move the code for the button underneath the definition for the async button callback because this button callback will work for all of the buttons. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put both the creation of the button and the adding of the button in a for loop. There are four buttons and four questions. So let's use that as the controller for the loop. Now I've got my code to create my button and my code to add the callback and my code to add the button to the view all within this loop. So I'm going to create four buttons with that data. At the moment, I'll be creating four buttons with the same answer on them. So let's change that. So instead of it being answer zero, it's answer I, which is the control variable for this loop which means that the first button that we'll create will be for answer zero, which is the first answer, then answer one, the second answer, and so on. Let's go and have a look and see if this worked. When I click work now, I get all my options. And if I can click the right one, which is difficult there because I don't know what the original question is, all the questions disappear and I get my message. Well, let's add in that question because that's all that's missing really. And that's on the send command. And basically what we need to do is send the question first. And that's going to be the first argument. When I run it this time now, I'm getting that question directly there. And that works fine. Now there is one slight problem with this, is that we're posting this to an open channel. And that means that anybody can click that button and do the work for the user. We don't want that. So let's send a DM. Let's send it as a private message to that user. And this is a really easy change. All we're going to do is take the line right at the end that says ctx.send and change it to ctx.author.send. This will send a message to the author of the original message, not just to the entire channel. Now have a look at how this behaves differently. By changing one part of the code, when I do work now, I get DM'd by the bot. And in the DMs, I've got my questions. I can click on the answer. The delete still works and now, one of the only problems is I'm having these slash work commands spamming the channel. Since no one else is seeing what's happening when I'm into the work, wouldn't it be nice to get rid of them? Well, it's a reasonably easy add. All we're going to do is the first thing that happens when they type work is I'm going to delete that message. Await ctx.message.delete will remove it from the channel. So this time when I try work, it'll remove that command and then DM me, which is probably the better way of working. Okay, so it's awarded me $100, but has it? Well, no, because I haven't actually written that code. Why don't you go now and extend your views so you get all four buttons and the answer is marked correctly. Now, we're going to steal the code from our bank command because it's going to be very similar to that. So I'm going to copy that and what I'm going to do, I'm going to my async definition just after the user interaction has happened and I'm going to add that code in there. Now, this does mean I need to move that delete a bit further down because otherwise we'll delete some of the important information that we'll need later on. I'm going to start by making sure that the user ID is different, making sure it's the author of the interaction. We'll still use that check user ID to make sure that person's actually got an account. And if they do, we're going to add 100 to their purse. Now, I only want to do that on the correct answer. So let's make a variable called value, so the value of the amount of money I'm adding. And I set it to 1, which will be, well done, you've tried. And if I get it right, I'll set it to 100. Add then the value to that user's purse, and we're good to go. Let's try it out. I've got my question, I've added 100, let's check my balance and see how we've done. And see that I've earned some money. Why don't you go and build a function that actually adds the amount of money to the user's account?
Okay, now time for the fun part. How can we get one user to rob another? Well, let's start off by defining our command. Let's add a second argument, which will be a user. And just like we've done before, it's going to be a discord.member and start it off as being equal to none. That means we can deal with what happens if we don't put that username in in a moment. But let's start sensibly. How would robbing likely work? Well, we don't want robbing to be successful every single time. And all we really want for robbing to happen with is to take the money out of the user's purse. So the bank is where the money's safe, but the purse is where they can be robbed in person. So the first thing we have to do is create a likelihood of robbery. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to generate a random number between 1 and 100. So we've got 100 chances. And I'm going to say that in my game, I got a 20% chance of being robbed, which probably sounds about fair. You can tweak these numbers yourself. I have a simple if statement. If the role is less than 20, I'm going to say the user's a robber. If it's anything else, I'm going to say has failed, were arrested and had to pay a $500 bail. Because you need to have some discouragement from people just robbing, robbing, robbing all the time. OK, let's check that works. So I may have to do this a few times because I've only got a uh, one in five chance of getting anything. And you can see all my fails here, but eventually I get a success. OK, let's go and add that code in then. Let's do something a bit more to it. Well, first thing, let's say what happens if they forget to put a username in. And I'm going to say if the user's none, send a message to the user saying you must include a username of somebody to rob. And I'll return to end that error. I'll also check that the user they're trying to rob actually has an account with us. And that, again, is going to be author ID and checking that value there and replying with an error message for the current user and for the victim. That just stops trying to rob from somebody that a database entry, which would cause a crash. OK, so if the robbery has worked, let's get the amount in the victim's purse. Let's set the victim's purse to zero and let's add that amount to our user's purse. So the robbery has taken place. Let's also tell them how much they stole and maybe even call the balance to show what's happening. Let's copy that code a little bit because if the user fails, they're going to get $500 deducted. Yet they're even going to negative numbers here. I'm quite happy for that to happen. And we'll tell them their balance as well. So let's check this works. You'll see if I try and rob this other user, Katie, and it's successful, I take her entire balance. If I fail, you'll see that I get $500 removed from my purse. There we go. Why don't you go and implement the rob function? Your challenge for this lesson is a little bit different. Now that you can deal with responses to messages and messages going back and forth, let's see if you can add some interactivity. Give the user being robbed the ability to reply with a message that would allow them to defend. If they defend successfully, you should steal the purse from the attacker rather than the robber. This should be reasonably straightforward to implement, but you will need to look at responses for that to work. OK, our major build is done. In the next lesson, it is the big challenge to build your own currency bot with its own intricacies and interesting parts.